Sun. These are our folks born from July 23rd through August 22nd. Uh, Leo, as you may know, if you are Leo or if you've dated or if you're dating a Leo, uh, this is the lion. Uh, that's the symbol, the animal symbol. When I think of Leo, I think of the sun, though. I like to think of <clears throat> the way that a lion radiates its roar out away from itself, right? Our sun radiates its light and energy and radiation out from its body, uh, which of course keeps our planet here, the Earth, uh, keeps uh, our ecosystem working, keeps us all alive. It's why we have plants to eat and animals and animals have plants to eat and etc. and oxygen and all the good stuff that we need here to keep this um, beautiful planet humming. So with that comes creativity. You think of all the things that are here on the Earth and it's a process of creation of birth and death and regeneration and over and over again. That's all fueled by the sun. So when you think of a Leo, I want you to think of this dynamic outward creative energy. That is Leo. Uh, a Leo is here to self-express. They're here to be heard, to be seen. Um, many times Leos, if someone has a very strong Leo chart, you know them when you see them. I met two Leos just this past week um, and I knew immediately before they even told me their birthday that they were Leo or at least had a Leo rising or a Leo moon, you know. Um, Leo has a colorfulness, and not literal colorfulness necessarily, although it can be, but there is a sparkly, uh, energetic, charismatic energy that comes from the Leo. Okay. Now, on the high side with Leo, we have a fixed sign. So this is someone who, once they've made their mind up about something, they're quite loyal and they're um, committed, uh, sometimes to a fault even. They can sometimes, like the Taurus or sometimes the Scorp, or, you know, uh, they sometimes can get themselves uh, in situations where they stay longer than they should, okay? Um, not always. Now, if they're, as long as they're being admired and, and they feel like this is a situation where they're getting their pets, and their, the, the affection and the time and the admiration that they need from their partner, they can overstay relationships that are maybe with partners who are on again, off again. You know, that can sometimes happen to a Leo because when it's on, it's really good and they feel fantastic. And then when it's off, they can feel um, dejected and they want to win back the um, on again affections of their partner, if that makes sense. So that can happen sometimes with Leo. Um, now, back to the Leo temperament though. Also, this is a personality type that's quite protective of loved ones. It's a fire sign. They have a natural leadership uh, quality to them. Um, they are warm and affectionate. Uh, they're quite generous. They like to, many times, a lot of Leo men in particular, they're gift givers, you know, um, they, because there's a nostalgia, uh, sort of like the way cancer is nostalgic, but in a different way. They like to be giving the, giving the gifts or giving the love, you know, that's this outward flow of energy. But also, Let's move to the shadow side of Leo. On the shadow side, Leo can also be pouty. If they're not getting the attention that they want or that they feel they deserve, um, they're, they can be pouty. Uh, they can be, uh, you know, like they're the divine child, actually, of the zodiac, the divine child, sun, the sun. And, um, you know, they can at times that they feel like they're not being loved by their partner as a mother would love a child, um, they pout like a little baby. So, um, also Leos need to feel like they're number one. They need to feel like they are the be all and end all. I have so many clients. This is really funny. It's anecdotal, of course, but I would say I can think of right now five or six different clients who have ex, and to, also two people that I've dated who have exes who have moon, their moon in Leo, that are female with the moon in Leo, and who broke up with Okay, mind you, they broke up with the male partner, but then after that male partner has moved on to a new female, the Leo moons come back into the picture, okay? Or they they, they need to they still need to feel like they're number one, even though they don't even really care about the, the partner, okay? Now, this is shadow side. So hopefully, if you're listening to this and you're a Leo, uh, you don't do such silly tricks. But if you do, we're on to you. Um, also, you've got, uh, they can be vain, right? Leo, is, they can be proud. Dignified on the high side and proud kind of on the like low functioning side um, where they don't want to look bad so they will um, they can cover their tracks or you know lie about something to save face. Um, they're such good salespeople. They're so good at talking you into whatever it is that they kind of 
have in mind. Um, like a true Leo, they're they're so you, they're so enthusiastic and charismatic. You feel like, well, yeah, I want to do whatever it is you're talking about. That sounds great. You know, they can really sell people into something. Um, but you know, that can also make them seem a little. They can be bossy sometimes, or they can be a little um, overbearing with what they think is the right way. That's a, if you're working like in a team, sometimes the Leo can be like wants to get its way. It's the king and the queen. You know, so they can be a little a little demanding or bossy. Um, but ultimately, they are a strong leader and a lot of times they are correct they have a good intuition and it's different than a water sign intuition it's a it's a fire sign intuition it's just kind of like a uh you know they'll strike out and try something and if it doesn't quite go the way that they expect it to go they'll fix it and make it go the way you know what i mean that's a fixed energy it's like a um taking what you've got in the present moment and and making it work okay um applying energy to that to make it work now um as far as also, also another shadow side thing, they, they do have a high need for thank yous um, and for praise. And I don't know that that's necessarily shadow side or low functioning. I feel like that's actually just, if you as a partner or a friend, if you understand your Leo, you recognize that they are generous and they give, 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 okay? Uh, but they don't do it the way a Virgo does it, where it's like self-effacing, like they give, 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 they don't really expect or nor kind of in a way want or feel comfortable with getting, receiving in return. Leo's not like that. Leo's the divine child. It's like a kid playing. They want to throw you, they throw you the ball and then they want you to throw it back to them. Like, okay, you know, like they want the back and forth. They want the, they want to give to, it's just like the sun and the moon, right? So the sun shines on the moon, the moon reflects the light back. They just want this reciprocity there and they want to be told thank you or, you know, like to recognize that they're making an effort and they're focusing all their divine energy on you. Um, so recognize that and know that you are with someone who is here to, to express their ego. So you need to support that, that sort of life purpose. Okay. Okay. Leo's in love. Now you've got a Leo, someone who's true Leo, they're very romantic. They're ardent. And because remember we talked about them being the divine child, there's an innocence to the way that they love. They like to have fun. They like to be spontaneous and surprise their partner with, you know, whether it's a fun trip or it's a, even just something simple like a letter, a love letter that they've left for you on the counter. Or, uh, you know, a female Leo, I can see her leaving like lipstick kisses and words and stuff on the mirror, like that kind of thing. Like they're, they like to demonstrate and express their love when they're really in love with someone. And they're really proud. Like on social media, you see Leos, they'd be posting like pictures of their partner and the two of them together and you know they they want to show you off um they and it's not out of it's just it's out of this place of kind of like you know they just admire you as well and so when they admire they have to like let out others know they can't like keep it to themselves okay Okay, Leo's expectations and love. Now, Leo's many times, like I said earlier, they have a little pride and dignity to themselves and the way that they operate. They appreciate a partner who also takes pride in themselves. And this includes physically, you know, a lot of Leos, they can be kind of flashy with the way that they dress. You could have a Leo that started out, uh, you know, with not a lot of money and then gets a job in the real world and starts making some good money. And then the first thing they would do is go out and buy some really nice clothes, you know, like they like to, again, because they're this energy that's about flowing outward from this. It's an extroverted expression of energy. So to be seen, to be heard, to make a, a mark, that's Leo. And so the way you dress many times, they can be bold. So they like a partner who is also someone who presents well, you know, someone that they can take out in public and be proud of. Um, now, also expectations. They expect loyalty. They are loyal. If they've uh, committed to you, um, if you know, if they're in love with you, you know with a Leo, okay? Of course, the whole chart, we need to look at the whole chart, but Leo is quite expressive and ardent. When they're in love, they can't help but tell you. So you will know. Um, and if you violate that and you are not loyal in return, that will really angry a Leo anger a Leo. Um, and it's the one thing that would make a Leo leave, really. Um, and a Leo who stays in a situation where their partner is cheating on them, they've got to have some, I don't know, water or earth on that moon or, you know, some other things happening there, um, perhaps some Virgo Pisces stuff happening or 6 and 12 house stuff happening to get them to stay. And they're going to hate themselves the whole time that they're staying. So loyalty is important. Leo's biggest fear is, you know, their number one kind of Remember, they're the sun. So they need to be recognized. They need to feel like they're doing something with their life that's important. In their relationships, they need to feel like they're important to the partner. Uh, there is a little bit of an egocentrism to them. I mean, look, the sun 
it's our star that holds our entire solar system together. So they probably deserve, um, and they probably, you know, a Leo typically, and if, as long as they're well aspected, they're quite loving and they deserve the admiration that they need, you know, they seek. Um, their biggest concern is that they're not important, that they're not, you know, number one to their partner, that they're not number one in whatever their, their field of work is. You know, they're, they're quite ambitious. Um, because it's the sense that you came, you, you lived your life, but you didn't do the one thing you were supposed to come do, which is leave a mark, an indelible mark that's unique to you. That's Leo's mission. So if they feel like they're not accomplishing that, then you got a, a sad Leo. So that's their fear. So support them in their efforts, their creative efforts, uh, their career efforts. Um, be patient with them when they do go through a little ego. Um, times where they get a little, kind of a little inflated ego. Um, if you can help bring them back to earth, that's always good. But do it in a nice way without hurting their, their dignity. Okay. Uh, and ultimately, they just need love and affection returned back to them. They just, they're pretty simple. They want to be admired, loved, and snuggled and all of that good stuff. So that's your Leo. Capricorn sun sign. So Capricorn, this is December 22nd through January 19th. These are the goats. Um, now, when you think of Capricorn, I want you to think of an earthy individual. What does that mean? So when you're earthy, that means the earth is something you can see. You touch it, taste it, throw it, make something out of it. That's earth. It's here, practical uh, it's in the sensory reality that we experience here in the three, this three-dimensional world, this three-dimensional three space. Capricorn is like the king of this place. This is a sign or ruled by Saturn. Uh, Saturn traditionally is Kronos, the god of time. Kronos also uh, is the father who eats his children because, as you know, the mother births us and introduces us to this mortal world. Thanks, mom. And then that also means she kills us through introducing us to our father, Saturn, Kronos, right? Who is going to eventually eat us. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Yum. Okay. So Capricorn, in, uh, Capricorn types are serious folks, uh, practical folks, even if you've got a fun Capricorn, there's a quality to them that realizes the, the realities of life. This is why with business, they're good at creating a plan, working a plan, planning your work, planning your work, working your plan. Okay, that's Capricorn. They're practical. They're here. They realize the vicissitudes of life and they're willing to plan uh, accordingly. Um, now, with love and romance, when you've got a sun sign that has to do with, you know, practicality. It's kind of not that sentimental. It's cold, detached energy. Capricorn is a colder, more detached energy. Um, it is one that is focused on business. It's all business, right? So you're going to look at the rest of this chart, unless you're also a Capricorn. Um, and remember, your sun sign is how you sort of operate your life, all right? So you could have someone who's quite emotional and sweet and loving, but they're Capricorn sun, but they've got, a, for example, I've got a client, Capricorn sun. He has a Cancer moon, great businessman, uh, fantastic it, you know, setting it all up and making money and making it work. But his heart is really soft and sweet. He's very um, tender and loving to the people that are close to him. Uh, and so, you know, your sun sign is how you outwardly operate and express your ego. So in a love relationship, Capricorns are the types, because they're Earth, they're here to build something. They are not interested in dating just to kind of screw around. Uh, you'd have to have a lot of air signs or air energy or uranium energy on that sun or moon to make this person who's really uh, flighty. Um, for the most part, Capricorn, they're wanting to build something. So in relationship, they're quite traditional. They also, their ultimate end game is they want a partnership and they want it with someone who is excellent. They have a high uh, standard and they are looking for, you know, if you look at the birth chart, when you look at the zodiac, how it naturally falls on the wheel, you've got Capricorn at the very top, that 10th house, that's the Capricorn house in Western astrology, in the 10th house. Um, it's different in Vedic. I mean, it's shaped differently, but anyway. Uh, so 10th house there at the top, and this is a cardinal house. This is the house that has to do with how we appear in the world around us. So status is a, is a thing that's important to Capricorns. Even if you've got a pretty, like, it depends on their other 
obviously things on their other um, planets that, where the other planets are placed, but they'll be interested in status, whether it's nice clothing or a nice home or a job that's important or they're seen as important um, or doing something that's a serious, serious work. Uh, there's a discernment and, a, and a, a, a defining quality to Capricorn that they will apply to how they um, approach life. So your high function Capricorns, you've got someone who is focused, driven, uh, there's an ambition there, there's a loyalty to Capricorn, 10th house is an earth sign, It's a there's a nature where it likes to, uh, it's, it'll be quite, it'll be pickier though about the friends that they'll let in many times if you've got someone who's pure Capricorn, remember this is pure Capricorn. Um, and there's, it can be within female Capricorn, sometimes you can see like a, a bitchiness or like a, like, that's not good enough for me kind of a thing, which is great. I love it. Be picky. You know, there's pickiness. There's a pickiness to Capricorn men as well, actually. Um, they have an idea of what they're looking for and they're not going to waste their time going down roads that are inefficient and impractical. That doesn't make any sense to them. So... Uh, they desire intimacy as well with a partner um, because they're so much of Capricorn is in this sort of serious, sometimes cynical place. A partner who has a sweetness, who is very real and practical and here and grounded, but sweet, really appeals to a Capricorn, um, especially Capricorn. I mean, it's like goes in both directions, but uh you know, they're traditional and conservative, and so Capricorn male many times will like a female that is feminine, and um, Capricorn's quite masculine energy. It's like the general. It's the goat, but I think of it as the general, you know, someone in charge um, doing, they've got a mission, they've got a, a crystallized plan in their head, and they're bringing it from their brain out into the world around us. Um, and so they naturally um, make some good leaders. Uh, many times they're good at following rules or being the bureaucracy that creates the rules. And this can even be like a, a mom, a stay-at-home mom. She would be quite, um, have her idea of how things should be run in the home and, and be kind of systematized and organized with the way that she would run her home. That would be Capricorn. Uh, they're also solid and grounded. Um, there's a, a grounded practicality. Again, it's that earthy dutifulness. Low function Capricorn, you've got someone who can be a little picky. Uh, there is a discernment there and there's an understanding of quality, whether it's a quality of a human being, quality of a product, quality of the way a business is being structured and run. Uh, they can see when something does not meet their standards of what it should be meeting. Okay, so there's a they're the rule makers many times. They're um, they're the ones that uh, have a hard time then when other people are breaking the rules. They can be judgmental of others um, because, and also if someone's, if you've got a really conservative Capricorn, so we're saying like a pure Capricorn, uh, they can be annoyed with iconoclasts and with people who kind of go against the grain of what the status quo has suggested you should be doing. They don't like that. Uh, they can be cold and a little bit distant and sometimes place practicality or the system or the, uh, mechanics to how you're going to make something happen, the plan, over the emotions of the people that are involved in the plan or the, the mechanizations of the organization or this kind of thing. They can be a little bureaucratic and you can apply that in a relationship as well. Uh, but at the same time, they, you know, they can, all, they also show up. They're, they're, they're showing up. So they want you to show up as well. Um, so sometimes you have to follow the plan and the system so that everyone shows up the way they're supposed to, if that makes sense. They can be workaholics. They can sometimes place work over pleasure. They can be, and that can make them be stick in the mud sometimes. They can be a little like, you know, boring if you had a pure Capricorn. This is me. I'm a, I'm a fireman, so what do I know? But um, they can be a little, you know, just serious. They can be serious. Uh, and they can also sometimes struggle with emotional expression. Look at the moon. That's very important. Especially Capricorn moon or someone who's moon making an aspect to Saturn or is in the 10th house. They will have emotional control issues where they want to control their emotions when emotions come out. They want to restrict it. They want to put rules on it and put, you know, keep it in check, put reins on it. That can happen a little bit with Capricorn some, but that's more just how they sort of live their life. They'll be structured in the way that they live their life. Capricorn in love. So you got this personality type that has a seriousness to them. Um, and the way they approach things is with a sort of seriousness. Like I can get this done. I can make this happen, make this work. And in love, they do the same thing. They, in business and in other parts of their life, they're able to get shit done. So in their relationship, they think they should also be able to get shit done and they should make it work. So sometimes if you have a Capricorn who's in an unrequited love situation, that's going to be really frustrating because usually they can get things 
to work the way that they want them to work. So, um, but when they're in a relationship where everything's good, they you've got a partner who, or you are the partner, the Capricorn, who wants foundation, who wants to build something together. They want a serious long-term commitment. They want to know that they, there's reliability there on both ends. Um, ultimately, Capricorn in that tenth house is opposite the fourth house, Moon, Cancer, fourth house, which is the home. They would not have purpose without the fourth house. So a Capricorn ultimately needs home. They need their partner. They need to know that all the work that they're doing is feeding this place, ultimately, the mother, the home, the family, um, because that's ultimately where they're going to get their safety and security from. You see, it's like a loop. Uh, these two need one another. So if you have uh, someone who is single, who's got strong Capricorn in their chart, or strong 10th house placements in their chart, and they don't have a partner, they don't have a grounded sense of home, you'll have an individual who's all work and perhaps no play, and they focus all their energy on work, and ultimately it's going to lead to a life of probably not feeling totally fulfilled because their purpose uh, to be seen and to create status will never really truly be witnessed by anyone who is intimately involved with them. Um, so that's a side note. But Capricorns in love, they need to feel like they've got that partnership, they've got that home and that soft place. And they're, as romantic partners, they're dependable and lovable and, or loving. You know, they're, um, they take care of, they take it seriously. They take their relationship seriously. So they, they are good partners. Uh, they expect loyalty and they expect uh, you know, fidelity, loyalty, a certain t a sort of um, respect. Um, they Capricorn men want to take care of the people they love because that's not what they know how to do. So many times they are, um, you know, it's quite traditional where they have a, a wife or a girlfriend or someone that they care for, they financially take care of. Capricorn females, on the flip, many times you'll see them being attracted to men who are powerful, or they themselves will be career women. you got to look at the whole chart, of course, but if you've got a 10th house son, no matter what the sign, it could be Pisces, this is a female who needs to be um, doing something ambitious with her career, and may have a hard time sometimes finding home. And it's the same thing with the Capricorn woman. Um, she may look for home in places where she's not truly in love. Uh, this can be a placement, you know, Capricorn. Females, especially if you've got a 10th house Capricorn son, there is a desire for and for for status, you know, for for being important in life, and so they'll do that with the partner sometimes, um, or through their career, which becomes their partner. They marry, become married to their career. I see that a lot in 10th house son placements. Um, but also Capricorn in love, they're very affectionate and they're lusty. They're this is like horny goat, you know. This is a lusty, earthy sign. And as far as Capricorn Venus and Capricorn Mars, these are people who have some like um, staying power to their sexuality. Um, they're very earthy and sensual and in the body and like kinky, but in a really earthy, like down dirty kind of a way because it's earth. Um, and they'll be the types too in love where they want to impress their partner. They want to do it right. They're really worried about that. Like if they want to do it the best of, you know, it's Capricorn. They're the best lover you've ever had. Um, so they'll have to prove that to you. Expectations of love. Um, they require loyalty and they require respect and admiration. Um, they also require, I think I already did this, didn't I? Okay, yeah, I did. Okay. Capricorn's, okay, Capricorn's biggest secret fear would be they're afraid of failing and as seen as such. So Capricorns are afraid of being seen as big losers, you know. Um, they, they're they not here to be losers. They're here to be successful and to be uh, of high status, whatever that may, however that may play out, depending on, again, Moon and Venus placement and where that sun is placed. Whatever it is that they do, they're going to do it with a certain level of excellence, um, or at least they'll feel like, they'll feel most happy when they're operating from a place of excellence and doing it the right way. Um, remember, status quo is also important, looking to the past, how things were done in the past, um, and doing it the same or better. Um, not necessarily changing the way it's been done, but just improving upon the way it's been done. That's Capricorn. And they'll feel if they're unable to meet that, <clears throat> they'll feel a sense of failure. And that for them is a big fear to be seen as someone who needs charity or somebody who is this little... Um, yeah, person who merits uh, pity. That's a bad place for Capricorn. They don't want to be there. So admire Capricorn, see them for all their strengths, build them up, uh, and you will be well on your road to happiness. 
Leo and Capricorn, right? You've got with these two sun signs, you've got two people who value feeling important or doing something with their life that is seen as important or simply being, um, you know, making their mark in the world. Now look at their moons to see how this will play out and the area of their life that they're in, that they're, you know, internally motivated to um, feel like they're doing something of import. Um, because of this, they both have sort of status uh, as part of their sort of personality of a desire to have a status that's a high status. So this might be attractive. They might value that in one another. Um, the long-term interaction between these two could be good. If the moons are happy, there could be uh, some happiness here. Now you've got Capricorn who can be a little bit reserved at times, and Leo really needs a lot of kind of uh, pets and, and affection and, and admiration, and Capricorn can sometimes hold back. Uh, so again, look at the moon sign. I mean, this is your overall personality. Your sun sign is a little bit different than your moon. It's how you're, just sort of how you're built. It's your natural, uh, just kind of um, way of operating, and it's the way you're gonna operate on the outside. Your moon is gonna show emotionally how you respond and instinctively react to your partner and to love and romance. So those are more important when we're looking at compatibility. But overall, you know, you've got two people who are going to take the relationship seriously and who there's an interest in commitment with these two sun signs. Um, they both, Leos tend to stay because they don't want to admit defeat and Capricorns tend to stay because uh, it's what you're supposed to do. And um, also, they also in a sense don't like to admit defeat. These both, both of these sun signs like to win or like to be the best or be on top. So to, to have a relationship fail means you didn't win. You didn't, you failed. You didn't make the thing happen. So that could keep these two together. And if their moons are unhappy, that could be maybe be not a great thing if this keeps them together longer than perhaps their relationship should stay together. But if they've got happy moons, then it's great for compatibility long term. Uh, also between these two, as far as conflict goes, you could have an issue of, like I said, Capricorn is a little more of an introverted energy in a sense. I mean, they're a little bit more about their plans and kind of what they have going on inside of them, unless their moon says otherwise. If you've got a fiery moon, then you got a different story here. But in general, Capricorns have kind of their own um, agenda, I suppose. And Leo does as well, but Leo's more... You're going to feel like the Leo's reaching more for the Capricorn, perhaps, or wanting the Capricorn to give them more affection or admiration or love or devotion um, and to make it more outwardly known. The Leo is most likely, especially if it's Leo female, going to be posting you know, pictures of the two of them together uh, on social media and things like this. And the Capricorn may not enjoy that, depending upon, of course, their moon and their Venus. But um, Capricorn in general, just kind of, they're kind of private. Uh, they're just serious. There's seriousness to them. They can't be bothered with frivolous things like Facebook and social media. So <laughs> they could be annoyed by it. Um, how others will see this relationship, they'll see this as two strong individuals, um, relatively private, uh, with the Leo perhaps doing a little bit of the chasing, especially a Leo sun male, um, and the Capricorn being a little hard to get, really, if it's a male or female in both directions. So an interesting dynamic but let me know how your leo capricorn relationship feels how it has how things have played out with you guys and i'm interested to hear and let me know what the moons are of you two as well because that is a big part of compatibility but thanks for watching and have a great day bye, -bye.